So the new morale no longer has models running off the board. Instead, Games Workshop's revealed a system of battle shock, representing squads getting suppressed in firefights. Looks like squads with leadership issues will score objectives worse, can't use stratagems and have issues falling back. And interestingly, it looks like the leadership issues will also apply to characters and vehicles. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about the newly previewed Warhammer 40k 10th edition morale system. Again, like much of the game, it seems to be a little bit simpler than it was before, and they've very much changed the feel of it. Looks like morale really won't have all that much impact on the damage and defence game, but causes issues with a bunch of other things such as stratagems, objectives, and falling back. I'd guess it probably is going to be fairly meaningful in 10th, even if it might not be relevant all the time. In Warhammer 40k, I feel like the morale system has had a few ups and downs. It's perhaps one of the areas of the game that Games Workshop has struggled to get right. In 7th edition and before, we had the 2d6 versus leadership test, and if you failed it, then you just fell back towards your board edge, eventually quitting the field if you didn't regroup. In 8th edition, this swaps to a system of basically causing direct casualties in the unit. You added casualties taken to a d6 result, and if it was above your leadership, you lost that many models. This would often be most relevant in really big units, and could cause a bit of a mass rout if they didn't have some sort of fearless mechanic, with a whole bunch of models disappearing. More recently, 9th edition morale system is kind of a refinement of the 8th edition one. It's now kind of a two-level system. First, you have to fail leadership. That one works kind of similar to 8th, and that causes you to take a casualty. And then after that, you roll combat attrition for the rest of the models in the unit, on a 1 they run away, or on a 2 if they're less than half strength. Usually means that you get a bit of chip damage to units from morale if it matters, but they don't outright quit the field. In their fluff, Games Workshop generally justified that as combat attrition. Not necessarily just individual models running away, but being forced to retreat, being cut off from supplies, or for units that you wouldn't expect to run, having their systems overrided, or being forced to execute a programmed retreat. Throughout 9th edition, there's also been a bit of a trend to try and use leadership for more direct damage purposes. Chaos Knights, Drukhari Phantasm Grenade Launchers, and Night Lords Melee could all convert morale into damage or defence of some sort. In general, I think this was kind of needed to make those mechanics useful as having big anti-leadership technology generally only works against a small amount of factions, and it often means that just investing in those mechanics too heavily isn't going to be that reliable, often meaning that you just need to back up with regular damage too. As I have mentioned in previous videos on the channel, I feel like perhaps the biggest problem for implementing morale in 40k is that most of their armies just in the lore are very unlikely to flee. The vast majority of their forces are fielding very elite, well-trained forces that are utterly motivated towards their goals, and plenty of armies just don't really have morale as being a big thing in their fluff anyway. Orcs are known to absolutely love a fight in big numbers if you can feel big mobs of them. Space Marines famously know no fear. And a whole load of other armies such as Thousand Sons, Tyranids Under Synapse, or Necron Warriors, these are all more sort of just soulless pawns led by their masters, and they do what they're told. Finally, we also have vehicle armies, things like Imperial Knights or tank formations. These just haven't worked at all with the old morale rules, though it looks like they might have some effects from these ones. But previously, again, that just adds an entire extra class of units and armies that don't care about leadership. Otherwise, just for the player experience, I feel like leadership can lead to a bit of feels bad. Certainly in the 7th edition and before system, if you just have one of your fancy shots shot a bit, and they unexpectedly fail morale and lay it off the board, it can just feel a bit arbitrary even if they're surrounded by the rest of their army. It can just be a bit annoying if your fancy super soldiers just turn and run away, rather than doing what they're told. Even if most people will probably agree that they'd want some sort of morale system in Warhammer 40k, but probably not to the extent where it's going to make and break games, and it's going to stop you using your miniatures. Overall, the system seems to have gone on throughout most editions of the game, in that most armies get their own morale exemption of one sort or another. It winds up not really mattering, either just due to the law of the army, and it will be unexpected to see them run. The mechanics like vehicles meaning that morale just doesn't matter for that army particularly anyway, or even for the armies that are morale susceptible, just having some things that are a leadership boost upgrade, like say Imperial Guard Commissars, which, if they're going to do anything, need to impact morale pretty meaningfully. That brings us to 10th edition though, and Games Workshop's new morale system, so let's talk about what they've given us so far. First up, it looks like morale is going to be happening in the command phase, they've basically just deleted the morale phase from the end of the turn, so it's all going to be happening at the start of the turn, not later. In previous morale systems, generally the tests that you have to do have often been caused by any casualties that you took the previous turn, but now it looks like you just test for any units on the board under your command under half strength. 
Sounds like if you had a whole bunch of depleted units in your army, you'd be rolling against their leadership each turn. And it means that some turns, the same unit might get negative effects from battle shock, but otherwise sometimes they might not. I guess it could represent the squad getting suppressed anew, or regrouping after they previously had a lapse in discipline. I guess sometimes it might be easy to forget one or two units that are under battle shock strength, might be a tiny admin chore to keep track of all the ones and make sure you test for them every single turn. Though I think arguably it would probably be less of a chore than keeping track of how many casualties a unit's taken over the course of a turn. So I guess that keeps track of one small off the table bookkeeping type thing, which maybe is just a little bit of a mental load if you're taking loads of casualties across a ton of different units, and they might have started from depleted states already. Then perhaps one interesting update is exactly which units are counted as less than half strength, as you'd expect it is squads that have fewer than half models left. But kind of interestingly for the morale system, it's now also individual units that have less than half of their initial wounds remaining. It does look like genuinely characters and vehicles could be affected by the new Battleshock system, as opposed to generally largely being able to ignore it, barring a few very niche rules. Might be a big deal if you happen to have an army of tanks or vehicles, maybe Imperial Knights or an Imperial Guard tank company. If your units are now less than half strength, then it looks like they'll have the opportunity to take Battleshock, rolling against their leadership. I guess given the recent vehicle previews, this might partly explain why the degrading profile actually looks kind of light compared with before. Previously, vehicles would degrade at half strength and then quarter strength. Now apparently it's just going to be one third strength and minus one to hit. I guess the chance to suffer Battleshock might be a stealth loss of the whole leadership system, having the chance to take Battleshock penalties when you've got less than half wounds. Pretty interesting for characters as well. I guess for the most part they might have some fairly decent leadership characteristics, but the one that we've seen for Space Marines and the Librarians seems to be the same as the standard squads. Then to actually go about checking the morale for each of these units, the system's changed a little bit, as I'd said before. You roll 2d6 against the model's leadership characteristic, and in this new version of the game, a lower leadership characteristic is better. So say on a Space Marine you roll 2d6, you've got to score a 6 or higher, otherwise they fail and take battle shock. I feel like they might have just chosen to decide to flip the leadership system on its head, as it might just be a bit more consistent with other roles in the game. For just about everything else in Warhammer 40k, rolling a 1 is bad, and now it's going to be bad for morale as well, as opposed to being good. In this new system, it looks like Space Marines have a leadership of 6+, plus, Tyranid Termagants have an 8+, plus, and an Orc Weird Boy has a 7+. Plus. It means that if these units were testing leadership, then the Space Marine would have a 72% chance to pass, the Weird Boy 58, and the Termagant 41. Though as noted on their datasheet, the Nids still have their Synapse rule, which they did confirm was going to change how they interacted with Battleshock, maybe just flat out ignoring it, or perhaps some bits of it mitigated but not others. Then, if they do fail this morale test and roll a very low number, they'll take Battleshock penalties for a single turn. Sounds like this isn't any prolonged effect, as mentioned before. So once the squad's taken Battleshock, it's not necessarily locked in Battleshock, and it might well regroup. Of course that leads us to the big question of what is Battleshock, and Games Workshop had kind of colloquially told us what it was before, but it is quite nice to see it actually laid out in black and white. Until the start of the model's next command phase, you get these three consequences. Firstly, the unit becomes objective control zero, so say if you just had a depleted unit of Gretchen or Cultists standing on a home field objective, I'd guess they'd be fairly likely not to be able to take it. I'd say out of the debosh, that probably seems like the single most painful one, Scoring objectives is how you get victory points in game, and if the opponent depletes a unit and then you roll unluckily, it means that they might just not be able to take it. That's going to have a direct impact as to who wins and loses the game and scores the victory points to do so. It also might be a bit more or less powerful depending on when objectives are scored in 10th edition. Currently in 9th edition, it's usually at the end of the command phase, and if it stays at that time, then the Battleshock test is kind of huge for this. After taking the test, you won't have any opportunity to move your units around to try and score those points. So say if you had a unit that was holding a point, suddenly fail Battleshock, and then all of a sudden you've basically lost the point for that turn. Quite a big deal. Overall, I feel like this is quite an interesting way of making morale usable, without actually directly impacting on the main rules that the unit might make use of. Something that's maybe hard to standardise across different armies when they've got different attacks and ways of doing things. Then the second part is saying that you need to take a desperate escape test if the unit's falling back. The exact wording is, if the unit falls back, you must take a desperate escape test for every model in the unit, it's not just for the unit in general. At the moment we don't 100% know what this is, but it does sound similar to Desperate Breakout, the stratagem that we've got for 9th edition that prevents complete encirclement and units getting wrapped and trapped provided you've got some CP. 
my guess is that like Desperate Breakout, this will probably be a chance to just lose models if you fall back. Maybe each individual model falling back needs to roll a dice and on a one they just die. I feel like if it was just a chance to keep the unit in combat or something like that, then you wouldn't be testing for every model in the unit. Overall, depending on how harsh the desperate escape rule is, this might be more or less bad. If it is just still losing models on a one, it's maybe not the end of the world. Taking one six casualties for falling back when you've lost morale is perhaps a lot less punitive than it might have been in previous editions of the game when you might have just had your entire squad wipes. Finally, the third debuff that the squad takes is that you can't use stratagems. Apparently they are going to be a slightly less big part of 10th edition in general, 12 core ones and 6 faction specific ones for each army, plus there's going to be fewer command points going around in general. I'd guess that for the most part, if you're taking battle shock, it would mean that you'd be having less than half of a unit in your squad. For the most part, those tiny depleted units don't generally tend to be particularly good choices for stratagems anyway. Though occasionally things like a command reroll or something like that might make a lot of sense if it makes the difference between them living or dying. Really though, I feel like the way that this one's going to be most painful is for any stratagems for really big vehicles or really important characters. If your vehicle or character has taken battle shock and then all of a sudden they can't use any of their support stratagems, then that could be really quite bad. For any stratagems that do target these kind of units, it can be massively game changing, say maybe fighting in death for a character, or perhaps being able to fight on full profile for a vehicle, or rotate iron shields for a knight. Still though, I would kind of guess that for smaller units it might be a bit of a forgotten rule this one. Generally no stratagem access isn't going to be very important for tiny infantry squads that have been broken to battle shock, as a restriction that I feel like is going to be rarely implemented because you're not usually going to want to target the things, I could see it sometimes being forgotten in games. Overall, I think that the new leadership system is pretty interesting to be honest, and there might well be a few more mechanics to it. We don't know the core list of stratagems yet, and certainly in 9th and 8th edition there's been a 2 command points to automatically pass leadership floating around, we don't know whether or not that's going to survive. It'll also be interesting to see how morale mitigation or fear causing units impact on this. I guess we might still get morale re-rolls or modifiers of a plus or minus one to the characteristic when they take the test perhaps. I feel like these ones were a little bit awkward to implement in 9th edition with both morale and combat attrition being quite important. Overall I do quite like the idea though, it's a bit more akin to units being suppressed or shell shocked in a firefight rather than just flat out quitting the field for whatever reason. It looks like it could be kind of meaningful. As I mentioned I feel like the objective scoring bit is probably the biggest deal, maybe more so than the others. It is interesting though that while the units might not be quite as supported or flexible, it does seem like for a lot of damage dealer units, battle shock just really isn't going to matter to them whatsoever. If you've just got a unit that's sitting and shooting and destroying the enemy with guns, they aren't going to care about failing morale here, not unless they're trying to fall back from combat or they're trying to hold an objective. Melee units will also be fighting just as well as they ever would, though maybe not being able to take objectives from enemy units quite as well. I also found it kind of interesting that the player going second would wind up with a little more battle shock overall. They'll be able to take battle shock tests in the first turn, but the player going first is never going to. I guess that's maybe kind of similar to the current system at the moment though, it means that leadership does have a bit of a first turn advantage. Overall, I'd say that this generally looks broadly positive, units being pinned down in a firefight, as opposed to having individual models heading for the hills, and a bit less admin to do in terms of keeping track of models destroyed. Let me know your thoughts though, how much do you like this new mechanic, and how impactful do you think that morale is realistically going to be in 10th edition compared with the previous editions of 40k. If you've enjoyed the video and you want to keep up with the news and updates of 10th edition and Warhammer in general, feel free to subscribe to Allspecs Tactics where I'll certainly keep the regular updates coming. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspecs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's how I can afford to keep on making videos quite so regularly and doing this as my main thing. If you have been enjoying a lot and your support is enormously appreciated, channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.